Right, so sometimes things just happen that make us want to stop shooting film. Sometimes things happen that you go, oh, it's just too much hassle, it's too much hard work, and it makes you want to not shoot, not bother anymore, and just shoot digital cameras. One such thing is when you buy a new film camera and it just doesn't work or it is plagued with a myriad of problems. Just such a thing happened to me this weekend, which is why I'm making this video for you guys while I'm pissed off and fresh in my mind because I've just been scanning the film. Um, I picked up this Olympus SP35 rangefinder. Now, I'd been looking at one for a while on the internet because it, they're really cheap and affordable. They're a rangefinder, they're compact, they've got a bunch of auto features, they're meant to have a really um, decent 42mm lens, pretty sharp lens. Uh, ticks a lot of boxes for a very small compact rangefinder, and I don't have a rangefinder in my life anymore. Um, so I grabbed it thinking this is going to be great, and I didn't check a single one of these things. Now, I didn't check any of these things because at the camera market, I bought the camera uh, from a guy who I've known for years. Uh, all I asked him was, have you tested the meter? He said no. I didn't check a single thing. I just picked it up. No worries, man. How much do you want? Done. Here you go. I've been looking for one of these. I got all excited and caught up in the moment. So don't you do that. And paid him the money. And now that I've tested the camera myself, it is plagued with every possible problem and it doesn't work at all, really. Um, and if there's five things, five things I should have checked, five things I want to tell you guys to check when you're buying a new or used old film camera off somebody, doesn't matter if they tell you that it's film tested, doesn't matter, you check these things anyway. Luckily for me, in my case, because I know the guy, he's given me my money back and I'm sending him the camera back. But while this is all fresh in my head, I want to make this video for you guys. So I suggest making up a little camera check kit. All you need is a tiny little bag, a tiny little pouch will do. Pop a few things in there that you're gonna to need to be able to check these cameras. Number one, guys, check the meter. Batteries, check the meter. You're gonna need a 10 cent coin with you to open the battery door because pretty much every single Japanese SLR range funder, they all have the little 10 cent coin slot. Take a 10 cent coin in that little bag and the batteries you're gonna to wanna to take with you are most commonly is the LR44 battery. Now, this is what powers pretty much all the Nikon SLR cameras and a lot of other cameras for that matter. Take two, uh, SR, two LR44 batteries with you just to check the meter um, because even if it's a fully manual camera, like this is a full manual camera, it only requires batteries for the meter and the auto features, it's good to know that they still work. And if the camera does have some automatic features, you might want to use them one day but you didn't check the meter, then you get the camera and you realize it doesn't work and it's your own fault. So two LR44s as well. What you can take with you, I find, is a good little trick, is SR44 batteries. Now, they are silver oxide batteries. For instance, my one of my original Nikonos cameras, you guys know I've spoken about the Nikonos many times, the original one I had did not work with LR44 batteries, alkaline for some bizarre reason. But with SR44 batteries, these silver oxide ones, powered the meter work just fine so take those with you as well now the next battery you're going to want is for instance for a camera like this the older late 60s early 70s cameras all ran off the 1.35 volt mercury batteries batteries which obviously they don't make anymore because they're illegal uh, the replacement is this it's called it's the replacement is a px625 battery now Pretty much most online film retailers, especially here in Australia, places like Walkins, House of Film, Decisive Moment, they all carry a brand called Weinsell. W-E-I-N-S-E-L-L. Weinsell, because they're Germans, yeah? And they essentially have replacement batteries that are shaped like this. They will power things like the Olympus OM-1 meters, this Olympus um, SP-35, things like that. That's the other battery you're going to want. Now, the last most common battery you're going to want, especially if you're buying an electronic SLR camera, like my Nikon F6 here, is you're going to want a CR123 battery or two CR123 batteries. A lot of modern point-and-shoot cameras, they will all use the CR123 because it's high-powered and it's compact. So that's another battery to keep in your stash to check that the camera is working, that the meter's working, that any auto features are working. Next thing you want to check, guys, especially on the manual cameras, is your shutter speeds. What you want to do is, for all manual cameras, um, electronic cameras, it's all the same. You want to start at the top and work your way down or vice versa. What I like to do is start at 500th of a second, make sure it sounds pretty quick like that. Then I'll work my way down eventually until we get to one, checking all shutter speeds along the way. 
one, two, five. Then when we get down to 30th of a second, it's gonna slow down slightly. When you get to 15th, it's gonna slow down again like that. When you get to an eighth, it's gonna slow down like that. When you get to a fourth, it's gonna, oh look, it's not working. I didn't check on this camera. Shutter speeds from a fourth, uh, a half, one second, and bulb do not work on this camera. I didn't even check myself, found out the hard way. So make sure you check the shutter speeds, an auditory check to make sure that they are all working correctly. Next thing you can do guys is check the light seals. Make sure it's light tight, otherwise your film's all gonna be ruined. Like the two rolls that I put through this, light leaked, all to hell, buggered. We're gonna check those light leaks. We're gonna do two checks. One, we're gonna pop the back cover. Every camera does the same way. Pop that back cover and you're gonna to wanna to inspect all the light seals around the edge of the camera. There's gonna be one seal generally located on the edge of the camera body, that locates to the, on, sits on the door, and then the camera seals around the whole back door. For instance, on this camera, if I had bothered to look, I would have seen that they're all fucked, they're all rotted out and not working properly. Didn't even really look, got too excited, too caught up in the moment, I'm an idiot, didn't check, make sure you check the light seals. Now, next check you're gonna do is to make sure that there's one, we've checked the light seals at the back. They may all look fantastic, great. Next you're gonna do is pull out your phone and turn on the torch. What you're gonna to wanna to do next is to make sure there's potentially no light leaks coming from the front of the camera. That is to stick the light over the front of your lens and then put your eye up to the back door like this and look like an absolute kook doing it. Now. If you see any stray light leaks coming in through your eye when your eyes like that, then obviously there's a leak somewhere or something's wrong as well and the camera's not gonna be functioning properly. So make sure you check that. You may look like a goose for a second, but you'd be more of a goose if there's something wrong and you could have checked and you didn't. So next in your little go bag of film check, guys, you're gonna wanna put in a dud roll of film. Now, everyone's done that. Everyone's buggered up a roll of film before. You know, we've all done it. It's a good idea if you ever do it to keep it for this such such an occasion as this. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the camera's advancing film properly, guys. Now, it's a little bit harder to do on any modern electronic, cam, uh, electronic SLR because generally they don't have any kind of film advance. The F6 does um, because it's a professional one, but generally things like the F100, they won't, it's harder to check. But if you're buying an old film camera, guys, it's probably gonna have a rewind crank because that's what everyone wants. This is everyone wants a good old fashioned manual film camera. So what we wanna do, real easy, put your roll of film in. Now, every camera is a little bit different, but they essentially all do exactly the same thing. Load that film. Dogs, bloody sheep dogs, guys. Two of them, mucking around in the garage while I'm trying to film. Yes, out please. Yeah, yeah. Dogs. Anyway, as I was saying, we're gonna to wanna to load up the camera with some film, shut the back door. Make sure that every advance of the film lever, the uh, rewind lever is turning as well. You wanna make sure that it's turning so you know that your camera is advancing film correctly because God forbid you get halfway into a roll or something and it jams up and it doesn't work and then you pull too hard and you snap something or snap the film off in there. Just another quick check to make sure, okay, look, camera's advancing film and then just rewind and pop that roll out when you're done. And one last thing to check, guys, is, is the lens in good condition? Do we have any fungus, dust spots, things of that nature? Now, why it may be very simple to check on any sort of SLR lens, because all you have to do is, and make sure you do it, is grab that lens. Um, I can ooh, adjust the aperture on this back collar on this Nikon 50G. Open up the lens, take your torch or a bright light source like that and shine it in. Is there any fungus growing? Is there any dust? In the case of this 50 mil lens, yeah, there's a bit of dust in there, but that's fine. A little bit of dust never hurt anyone. But fungus, mold, uh, balsam separation, things like that are gonna cause issues when you're taking photos. Make sure you check that. This camera, I didn't do that. There was fungus in this camera. I had to use my lens wrench and take the front element out to get to the rear element to clean it because I didn't check. Now. I didn't check, and it's very common because with a rangefinder, obviously, we're not looking through the lens. I'm looking through the rangefinder patch, so it's easier to see things like that with an SLR, not so much with a rangefinder. So, because this is a leaf shutter camera, now this will go for a lot of cameras like all your Canonet QL series, things like that, the Minolta Matics. This is one thing you will need to check. 
If it's an SLR lens, it's easy. Check. With these ones, you're going to want to put it onto bulb because if I shine my light onto the front element here, I can look inside and I can go, oh yeah, looks pretty clean. That's fine. When I got home, however, I put the camera when I was loading and I was doing it, a, giving it just a little bit of a clean. I put it into bulb mode and held it up to the light like that and there was a big old bit of fungus on the inside rear element behind the leaf shutter that I couldn't see. Now, luckily for me, I've got some of these camera tools lying around and I was able to take out the front element relatively easy and clean that bit of fungus off. And luckily for me, the fungus was on top of the lens element, not sandwiched between two elements. So it could be clean, but even then it's still left a cleaning mark because once fungus has been there for a while, it kind of etches itself in. So it's still fucked in that regard. So another thing to check. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those tips. I hope they prevent you from jumping the gun and getting too excited like I did and just whacking your money down on the table. Like I said, fortunately for me, the guy, I've known him, he's given me my money back already and I'm gonna go drop this camera back to him in the next couple of days. But you may not be so fortunate to have such a nice uh, seller give you a refund. Remember, uh, a lot of eBay sellers, we can't check on eBay. eBay don't give refunds. But you may not be as lucky. So checking these things is definitely a must. It's paramount. Make sure you do it so you don't end up getting dudded like me. And avoid things that make you want to stop shooting film because they just go, it's too hard to fed up. Anyway, thanks for watching another episode of Shoots with Coops, guys. Happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next one.